electric shock batons for hours on end for 50 days. He was threatened that if he ever made this information public that he would be killed. Um, in early February, he, uh, he was disappeared again. Um, his friends and family feared the worst for him and released the account that he'd written of his torture in 2007. Um, I understand China Aid has uh, published a transcript of that, a translation of that account, and I recommend that everyone here take the time to read it. Um, it's absolutely heart-wrenching stuff. Um, and I think uh, since he's been disappeared and since they've already tortured him so badly in the past and they threatened to kill him uh, in the past, um, I, I hope that all of the congressional staffers and congressmen present here today can do whatever you can to bring pressure to bear on the Chinese government to release him and, and secure his safety. Chinese people do not understand the nature of the communist regime. It is the fear factor that works in China. Uh, the fear uh, is something the regime has put tremendous effort to create in China. In this country, during the good time or bad time, especially during the bad time, the government try to make sure everybody is content. That's the best we can do. But China is different. They don't care about whether people are content. They care about whether people fear. So, so it's not that Chinese people do not understand it. It's the fear effect works. <coughs> Especially the older generation who have experienced many periods of the communist rule. Understand very well. So few people actually stood up comparing with the whole population. Because they will be a risk their life, risk uh, imprisonment, being uh, arrested. So that's something we have to do about. Because they need, they need our support. You know, our support can minimize the risk and the price we have to pay. When the price continue to low, the more and more people will stand up against <coughs> the communist regime. So the international support is not only humanitarian, but also political, in this sense. Question. Uh, thank you for a very eloquent speech, and I think everyone here would appreciate that. that, that was, you were very good. Um, well, it's stated clearly in your speech, but I would like to ask you how you would advocate what, what is in it for the American public, what is in their interest to see that China uh, orderly reform or undergo a, a, a peaceful transition to a democratic um, state. It is great that we advocate to the U.S. government to put forth policies between U.S. and China relations and so forth. But how do you make it? How do you advocate to the general American public? Yeah, that's the beauty of a democracy. We have to work with the people, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the bottom up. And uh, we engage a lot of effort to do this. I myself go to various uh, campus to give speeches on like that. And uh, also we have a website in English. And we have a publication. But still, many, many dissidents living in this country are marginalized because they don't speak the language. So, and not only the dissidents in China are margin marginalized because of the government's policy, it drives them to, to the periphery of the society. But even then, the dissidents here are living in a hard situation, which I think we should support them. Among them are many, many thoughtful, uh, sensible thinkers <coughs> and practitioners of human rights. They can contribute a great lot to the general public of this country. But because they have a language barrier, they have uh, all kinds of difficulty for their own lives. They can not develop potentially uh, 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 fully their potential. So what we try to set up a think tank kind of thing to have our public, uh, our writings be published and distribute it as uh, wide as possible to engage in the communication with the people in this country. Thank you for your question.
think we're met, doctor. And uh, yeah, and good uh, presentation. And uh, I want to ask a question about the uh, situation of the democratic movement here in America. Because uh, I don't know, the, uh, this past uh, 20 years, uh, many, many, many uh, Chinese democratic groups were the active, active, but uh, some of them are just one man party, and some of them are divided. So, I don't know how many groups working in America or the outside of China. And the second question, then, how do you realize the unification of these groups? Because this uh, the right chapter is very beautiful, but uh, there's no the organization which can realize this chapter in China. Okay, very good question. But usually the good questions are difficult to answer. <laughs> yeah, we are fractured, to be honest. And we have many groups here. I don't even know how many groups. And there are a lot of reasons for this. Number one, we all grew up in the communist uh, culture, which advocated for a struggle against each other, and uh, not tolerate different opinions, ideas. So we all grew up in this culture and still influenced by it. Number two, the dissidents have a very, usually have a very strong personality. 